In the final tutorial series, I will cover everything you ever wanted to know about light maps, in specifically light maps inside UDK. I will cover what are light maps, how to create light maps inside Maya using the second UV channel, principles and techniques to use to create perfect light maps, how to fix seams and light and shadow bleeding, how to generate unique UVs inside your DK and why you shouldn't generate them here, why you should rather create a custom light map channel uniquely unwrapped inside a 3D app, how to set resolution for your static mesh light maps globally and uniquely for each static mesh placed, how to make your light map shadows be consistent across multiple objects, how to set light map VSP resolution, how to properly UV your light map and what are some of the rules that you should follow, things like padding between UV shells in order to avoid light map shadow and light bleeding. So I hope you enjoyed this series, light mapping with UDK. Let's begin. Now first let's talk about what are light maps. And light maps inside UDK are pre-computed textures that produce lighting and shadow information on non-moving static geometry. So when you're inside your DK, you place a few static props and you go up and you build lighting. What's left is pre-computed shadows and these are baked into non-moving static geometry in the form of light map textures. This provides you with sharp shadows and good looking light. Here we have a default template open we have a box that was placed and then I placed a static mesh to cast some shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and build the lighting. And after it's done building its lighting, if we move the static geometry away, we can see that we have baked information of the shadow of this object. And this is baked into the light map of the level. This shadow information and this light information is done through a light map. Now these light maps are stored inside UDK's map file. So if we're going to go ahead and open our content browser and right now we don't have this map saved. So it should be under untitled. And here under untitled 2 which is not currently saved we can see that our lighting information is stored inside this map file in form of light map. And this is where all the static non-moving geometry light and shadow information is stored that makes your level appear to be lit and shadowed properly. Now light maps are very important inside UDK, especially when you are creating your custom geometry, your custom static meshes, and you want them to light and shadow correctly. Each static non-moving mesh inside UDK has to have its own UV channel for a light map. If you don't have that UV channel created, your objects, your static meshes will be lit and shadowed improperly and they will just plain look ugly inside UDK. So let's open up the content browser and I want to show static mesh that comes with UDK. So let's open up this column. If I double click and go inside the static mesh editor, here we have our column that we can preview and here under UV channels we currently have two. That means this object contains two channels. One is for texturing and the second UV channel is for light map. The second UV channel is very important for the lighting information of the object. And the first channel is for texturing for the UV layout when you create custom textures for the object to look like it does. So in order for us to see the layout UVs we can click on show UV overlay and currently we are viewing one of the UV channels. So if we go here, use the drop down menu, we have UV channel 0 which is the texturing channel and then we have the second channel for light map, UV channel 1 and here's the UV layout information for how the object is going to be properly lit with light maps. Now light maps are the most common way to light your environment inside your DK. It's very fast, it's very cheap, and it gives you very accurate shadow and light representation. Now to create very accurate shadows and light for your custom models, you have to know what it takes to create a very good light map. 
and this is what we're going to talk about for the rest of the tutorial. First, let's see what happens to a custom model inside UDK that does not have a second UV light map channel. So here I have a simple object uh, that has some indents and extrusions to give us some light and shadow for our light map test. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the texture editor and currently I have two UV channels, one for texturing and one for a light map. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the light map channel. So all we are left with is just a single UV channel which would be used for texturing. So I'm going to go ahead and export this and export and I'm going to overwrite the already created wall that I have. And here inside UDK I have a test scene set up just to test for light maps and uh, do this tutorial for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and open the content browser and I have a package saved with all these models and here's the wall model that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and re-import static mesh. If I open up the static mesh editor here in the UV channels we can see we only have one single channel. So if we switch to zero and we go to wireframe overlay this is the same UVs that we see inside our 3D application. In, uh, in my case it's Maya. So we'll go ahead and open this. These are the same set of UVs. So let's go ahead and close this and if we let's delete this so I can place the object in in the same spot and let's position it to where it was. Uh, we still haven't built our lighting that's why we still have this shadow information from the previous object. So I'm going to position it to where it was and I'm going to assign a different texture. We just want to see a flat shader. We don't want to see any texture on top. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these previous objects that I have in the package and currently this uses a default UDK Fong opaque shader which comes inside UDK. So I'm going to use this and I'm simply going to apply and override the material on our wall. So all we get is a flat color. Currently this object does not have a second UV light map. It has one UV channel which is for texturing and let's go ahead and build our lights and see what this object looks like. After the lighting has been built we see that we have an error saying that static mesh has invalid light map coordinate index. This is telling us that our static mesh does not have a UV light map channel and if we take a look at our object it is shaded incorrectly and it does not have the shadows that we want we have light bleeds uh, it's just this is not what we would want in a map now this is a very common problem that I see is you create a static mesh you UV it and then you just simply import it and then your lighting does not reflect what it should look like especially when you place the object into your environment and the preview displays light information but once you build it takes into consideration your light map channel and it gives you the correct display which is not what we want. So now we're going to go back inside Maya and I'm going to undo delete so we have our second UV channel for the light map. So now we have UV channel 1 texturing and we have the second UV channel for light map. So let's go ahead and export this and re-import. Open up our static mesh editor. We can see we have now UV channels 2. If we go to the wireframe layout option we have UV channel 0. Our UV is here for our texturing and UV channel 1 which is the light map channel for our light map. Now there's some visual display problems. You see that there's some UVs uh, are overlapping and uh, uh, this is just a visual display. This does not actually have overlapping UVs. And if we go back in here we can take a look at our UV channel for the light map and it looks like this. So this is what it looks like inside UDK. This is just a visual glitch. So another important part that I want to show you is here on the light map coordinate index this is UDK way to determine which channel, which UV channel is used for a light map. So now we have it set to 1. That's why we have UV channel 1 
it, this is why it's currently a light map channel. We can change this to two, three, uh, we can set it to zero, whatever one you want, but default should be left at one. So let's close this. Now we have our updated static mesh with the second UV channel created. And let's go ahead and build lighting. Let's close this and we didn't receive an error for the object. And now we have the object lit and shadowed correctly. Now let's go back to Maya really quick. And I'm going to delete this UV channel again. I'm going to show you why I'm doing this. So I'm going to delete the UV light map. So all we have left is just a single texturing channel, no light map. I'm going to re-export and re-import the object back. So now we have just a single channel. Now we know what's going to happen. The lighting is going to be like it was without the UV light map channel. And here let's close this and we have again we have the same error no light map channel and here's back to what we had before incorrectly lit now what I want to show you is let's go to the static mesh editor for this object and we can generate a second UV channel inside UDK and it's called generate unique UVs and if we go up to mesh generate unique UVs and scroll down right here we can generate a second UV channel for a light map for this object. Now this is not the ideal way to do so. Uh, it may work for a simple box sphere shape, but when you get into more complex geometry, it just does not work like it should and it produces a lot of errors in padding, uh, a lot of errors with shadow and light bleeding. So I'm going to generate a second UV light map so you can see what it looks like, but for best results, you want to generate your unique UVs, your second light map channel inside a 3D application. I'm just going to keep everything as default and click apply. Here we have the second light map channel. Let's click on overlay and here we can see our light maps. And if we switch over to zero, this is our texturing channel. Now let's go ahead and close this. This has been updated and we need to build our lighting. Here's our model with unique generated UVs inside UDK. And we can see that uh, we have some issues. We have some light bleeding on the shadow geometry and it's not, it does not look good. So in order for us to fix this, we can't just go back and regenerate it. Uh, we really have to lay them out inside a 3D application and we need to uh, follow a few rules when we lay them out. So this doesn't work like we want it to and we can't fix it manually uh, because it's been generated automatically. In the next tutorial within the series, I will cover how to generate and create your own unique UV channel inside Maya and how to lay out your UVs for the light map.